cargo station, same as mine. I come from the tribe of Levi. The only difference between us is a bow stop. And I want to give you some commandments, because that's, read Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, because that's the only way we're going to receive eternal life. You believe in God? You believe in Christ? All praises. This is what Jesus Christ said, your Messiah, who came to save your people. You understand that? Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. And behold, what came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? This is what they're supposed to be teaching in every church. So I'm going to ask you, what do you think Christ is going to say for you to receive eternal life? All praises. That is correct. Read That's that. Right. That's right. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is not good but one. That is God. But if thou would enter into life, if you want the kingdom of heaven, what must you do? Keep the commandments. You have to keep God's commandments. So you are correct. You have to keep God's commandments in order to receive eternal life. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. This is a commandment that God gave unto his children, the 12 tribes of Israel. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 22 verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Hey, we got the bathroom signs back there? The bathroom sign? It says, the, uh, this says, the uh, woman should not wear what pertaineth unto a man. Read on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What's a woman's garment that a man should not put on? A dress, panties, bra, right. lipstick, right. high heels. Right. Those are things men should not be wearing. Right. If I was standing up here on, in high heels in a dress, would you take me seriously? So read the top part. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So sis, because we have to keep God's commandments to, re to get into what? And to get into heaven, right? So if you're breaking the commandments, would you get into the kingdom of heaven? You're correct. You won't get it. So are you wearing something right now that pertains to men? Huh? What is it? Correct. Pants. Because you can have a jean skirt. Jean is just the material. It's pants. Because as you can see, how we know the difference from the woman's bathroom and the men's bathroom? The dress code. We know the woman is always in a dress, even your foremothers, at the times of slavery, working in the cotton fields. They were in dresses. You understand? What's your name, brother? Dimitri? What, what, Demetrius? What tribe you from, brother? Because we're teaching the commandments of God, because that's the only way you're going to receive eternal life. You're from the tribe of Levi. All praises. I'm also from the tribe of Levi. So watch this. Give me um, give me God's the texture of God's hair. Because sis, we've been taught our whole lives to basically hate each other. To hate how we look. Because when you look at these uh these magazines, the most people you always see European fashion. You will never see the fashions of the Israelites. You will never see a border of blue and fringes. Because that's what God ordained on what we should have on our clothing. And we'll read that. But listen to what's got the texture on God's hair, because he made us. When he made Adam, he made Adam to look exactly like him. Read that. Daniel chapter 7, verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit. The Ancient of Days is God. If he's sitting, if he's sitting, that means he has a what? If you can sit down, you have a what? A body. So it's not no, God ain't no spirit that nobody can see. He has a body, because when he says, I'm going to make man out of the dust of the ground that looks like me, he says, let's make man in our image, 
Of course that man has to have arms and legs if this is a man. Of course God has to have hair on his head, eyeballs, eyebrows, legs, feet, stomach. He must have those things. Read. Whose garment was wet as snow? He had clothes on, read. And the hair of his head, like the pure wool. Now the hair on God's head was like the pure wool. Do you know what pure look like? Wool? Woolly textured hair? What woolly hair texture did it look like? Like like sheep hair. The hair on our heads. The hair on his head. Your natural state of hair before they put perm in it. That's the woolly texture. Give me Proverbs 3.31. Because I, I want you to understand these things because this is how you're going to not only teach yourself and do it, but also teach your children if you have any, or your sisters that's around you. You have to let your light shine. Read that. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 31 Envy thou not the oppressor God says don't envy the oppressor Read And choose none of his way You shouldn't be looking like the same people that enslaved you they, Their natural hair is red Their natural hair is blonde Their natural hair is straight Ours is woolly It's curly in texture It's kinky, sheep hair You're supposed to love that thing God says don't envy your oppressors Even when you go into the uh the business world, the majority of the time they want our women to perm their hair or put weave in it or put a wig on. But God says don't envy that. You're supposed to love your natural state. You understand that? Give me first Peter's. First Peter's chapter three. Matter of fact, give me Sirach chapter seven, verse six. Do you have a husband, sis? You got a boyfriend? Yeah, let's get that. Let's get that. Proverbs chapter seven, verse six. Oh, oh, that's the boyfriend. Oh, 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 oh man, y'all, are y'all apart? Y'all together? Are y'all apart? Oh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm saying, but yeah, you know, yeah, it was kind of confusing because the separation. Oh, no. All right. Hey, Sirach chapter 25 and verse 1. Let's get that. Sirach chapter 25 verse 1 and then uh, Sirach 6. Sirach chapter 25 verse 1. In three things I was beautified and stood up beautiful before both before God and men. The unity of brethren. The love of neighbors. A man and a wife. A man and a wife. Not boyfriend and girlfriend. A man and a wife, read. That agree together. That they agree together. So you both finding out that you're from the children of Israel, you have some agreements. That agreement is keeping the commandments of God. You understand that? Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. This is the agreement in God's commandments. Matter of fact, before you grab that, Exodus 22 and verse 16. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. Because you both know, you both will know now what you must do. But you both will have to go through a step to understand that if we're going to get married, we both have to be on the same page. Read that. The book of Exodus chapter 22, verse 16. And if a man entice a maid, that is not be Trump. These laws were given to the children of Israel. Only the Israelites can apply these laws. Read. And lie with her. So if a man entice a maid, spit game to her, and he sleeps with that sister, read. He shall surely, no maybe, surely, he have to, read, and tell her to be his wife. That's you have right. to make that woman your wife. But you were raised in the commandments of God. But now you know the commandments of God, you have to start applying it. Now give me that, Hebrews 13, 13 and 4. And before that, before going into marriage, you both will have to prove each other again. Right. To make sure that the step that y'all about to take is going to be permanent. Because you cannot divorce her after you marry her. Right. You have to die with that woman. Right. Right. Read. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4. Yeah. Marriage is honorable in all. God has respect when a man marries a woman and not just cause her to have a child and then bucks on her. Read. And the bed of the vow, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. And how he normally judge those that want to commit adultery or want to sleep from woman to woman to woman or man to man to man, you catch AIDS. Or that man comes home and you don't know that she's married because she lied and he put a bullet in that man's head. It goes vice versa. Now give me uh, Sirach chapter 7 and verse 6. Because it tells you marriage is honorable, but if you're an adulterer or a fornicator, God will judge you. And that judgment comes in that payment of death or in a disease. Read that. Sirach chapter 7 verse 6. Seek not to be judged. No, prove a friend. 6 to 7. Sirach chapter 6 verse 7. 
If thou wouldest get a friend, it says when you want to get a friend, because before you marry a woman, you're not just going to marry a random woman. You're going to find out what's her attributes, what her mindset is. I want to make sure that if I, before I marry this woman, this is a woman I could spend the rest of my life with. If, you, if you're ever going to date a woman, it better be a woman that you plan on marrying. You understand, read on. If, no, no day, but prove it. And then you'll get to know that system. Read. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. Sister, you shouldn't be hasty to credit a brother if he take you to Red Lobster. If he take you to the movies. Or he bought me a bag. He bought me some shoes. Okay, I can open my legs now. Nah, don't be hasty to credit him. Same thing for a woman. Oh, she got a good job. But as soon as you get with her, she a demon. You find out she don't want to listen to anything you do. She calls you out your name. She treats you worse as possible. Because we, we have, you hear this saying, um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. But you hear if a woman talks down to her man, that does something to us spiritually. Mindset to us to the point where we don't want to do things that's necessary to uphold our household. Or we feel as if, man, forget it. I'm not even going to try to do it anymore. Read that again. So watch up to 6 verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first and be not hasty to credit him. So you want to make sure that friend, that friend that you're proving, watch this, read on. For some man is a friend for his own occasion. It could be where you making six figures. You could be making three stacks every two weeks. And she knows what's in your bank account. Right. Oh, I'm going to hold on to him. Right. I ain't going to work. He's going to take care of me. Right. Oh, I'm going to make sure as long as, as long as I listen to him, I'm good. Now, nah, you want to make sure that woman, depending on your mindset, is that same mindset that you have. Right. I want to work for the kingdom. I don't want you just being there lazy, not being profitable to me. You will help me. That's what the woman's place is supposed to be. Underneath the man. Read on. And what not abide in the day of thy trouble. Meaning... You ever heard, oh, when, when I'm up, you with me, but when I'm down, you're gone. Those things happen. It happens in relationships. Because when you first meet that person, you could be balling, you could be having a job, and she's with you. But as soon as you lose that job, you're on hard times. They leave. They gone. Vice versa, same thing. You may have a good job. You may have something going for yourself. He sees it, he want to grab onto it. But as soon as it's over, I'm going to the next. That's why the scriptures say, prove them. Prove them. And if that time ends up happening and you both know God's commandments and you both know what you need to do to get eternal life, you know that if, if ever, which I would, I, if you're smart, you would get married first before you open your legs to make sure, look, that it's signed. There's no leaving you. Because at any time he can say, deuces. Why, why buy the cow when I get the milk for free? Why? If I could always come to it and I, I get what I want, I'm not going to marry you. Right. Think about it. Read on. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity in strife will discover thy reproach. Be continually with a godly man. So when it comes to proving that man, you have to make sure that the man is keeping God's commandments. Right. Same thing with the woman. You want to make sure that woman is going to abide by God's commandments. You got that? Sirach? Six, six, six and seven. Be oh. Continue with a godly man. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I got it. Sirach chapter 37 verse 12 But be continually With a godly man Who thou knowest To keep the commandments of the Lord So if you know he's He's going to keep the commandments of the Lord What you know he won't do Exactly Give me that Ephesians chapter 5 verse 33 He won't hurt you Not only that but according to the Bible, he can't leave you unless you commit fornication. Unless you slide and go have sex with another man, that's the only way he could divorce you. But if you know you're keeping God's commandments, would you? Would he ever leave you? If he's a godly man, he won't. So all you have to do is abide by God's commandments and strive for a better relationship. When things go wrong, go into the scriptures, finding out how you got to fix it. Read that, Ephesians 5, 33. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33. Nevertheless... Let every one of you, in particular, so love his wife, even as himself. So he has to love his wife as he loves himself. I won't hurt myself. I won't cut my wrist. I won't shoot myself in the head. I won't right. put hands on myself. Right. Why would I do it to my wife? That's what the scriptures say. So if you know he's a godly man, what he would do to himself, how he takes care of himself, how he goes to work, because as a man, he has to take care of the household. Because if somebody breaks in, are you, are you going to be the first one to get up and go check who's breaking in? 
or you expect him to get up? First Corinthians chapter 11. Matter of fact, submit yourselves. 31. 30, right here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Get out. 24, no, 23, 23. Pay attention to this. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife. This is what you must learn. You're the head of the woman. If, you, if you're going to make her your wife, well, first, bro, prove her. Make sure she's going to keep God's commandments. Right. Read. Have you been doing research? Have you been studying? I'm not watching all online. Okay, all praises, all praises. So you know you're in this life. So watch this. So you know, so you knew, both, both of y'all knew y'all had to get married. I've been getting her on it like that. I'm watching with me. Okay, all praises, because we seen her out here first. But she came and she went and got you? Uh, she told me that she seen y'all, because I seen some, some of y'all over there on uh, my Walmart. Okay, all praises, all praises, all praises. All praises, all praises. Read that. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. He is the savior of the body. The only way he's going to be able to save it is by him keeping God's commandments. Because that's the only way you're going to be saved. So the only way that can happen is by you applying God's commandments. And we're going to give you some. Give me Leviticus chapter 21 and verse 5. You know about this. You heard it. All praises, all praises. So you have to start applying it. And that's all you can grow right here? Okay, okay. Same thing with me. Same thing with me. Read that. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 5. They shall not make baldness upon their head. Neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard. So you're not supposed to shave off your corners of your beard? The little bit I can grow, I can trim down. But you can't completely take it off your face. All right? Now give me the one Give me the one on Jerusalem, how they can't even go into the Jerusalem. 2 Samuel chapter 10, verse 4. What for? Hadad took David's servants and shaved off the one half of their beards and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. So it was a, it, it, this is what they did to put shame on the men. They shave off half the corners of their beards and cut their pants to the buttocks. The other nations did that to us. Read. When they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. What were they? Greatly ashamed. Your forefathers were ashamed to have their ass showing. That's right. You understand that? So sagging your pants, should you be doing that as an Israelite man? So you got to pull them pants up. That's right. You ain't supposed to be sagging your pants. Because, you know, in, in that, 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 that type of style came from the jails. That showed that you was owned by another man. They kept it out here, and they made it into a style. Also, it goes even further. Pick up that uh, slave ship. See, when you understand where we come from, we was dressed in royalty. When you read Ezekiel 16, God always dressed the nation of Israel in royalty. The other one, give me the other one. But when the other nations, your oppressors came, they got you. The first thing they took, they they took you. They took all your beautiful garments off. They made sure you was butt naked. They put rags on you, so you could be ashamed. You understand? So they, the same system is rolling over again. That slave mentality is still upon us today. That's why we take that. Oh, uh, let me show half my ass. Or the sisters dress half naked, but they're not knowing they still keeping the same oppression in their mind. That being half naked crap, that came from slavery. Right. You understand that? When, when the oppressors came, they said, save their face. That's why I look at that. They, so they could look like a boy. Right. Because you got to understand that wearing a, a, a beard on your face is a, is a badge of manly dignity. Right. It showed your manhood. Right. All right. The most I even put that same uniformity up, uh, upon the uh, lions. How you tell the difference between a male lion and a female lion? There you go. You see that? But Christ, the Most High, He gave you a uniform. He gave the woman a uniform. So if you're not doing that, guess what you are? You out of order. Because just like a, in a, at the job uh, place, if the boss tell you, listen, this is the uniform. You're going to red, wear red and blue. If you don't wear that, what's going to happen to you? You gone. Well, the boss of all bosses, He gave you a uniform. He gave the twelve tribes of Israel a uniform. The men. He gave you a uniform. He said, well, uh, try to grow your beard, keep that beard. He said, well, pick up your pants. That's how you need to dress. You need to dress like a king. Because God called you royalty. You understand? So that style, that fashion, it's not, it didn't come from you. We didn't come up with that. 
I know most brothers say, oh, okay, that's prison fashion, but God said, nah, that's slavery fashion. That's the servant's fashion. That's them. Give me uh, 1 Corinthians 7.31. You got to understand, all that crap is going to pass away. God, when he come through, he's going to send that all the way. Huh? Oh, no, all right, here we go. Here we go. All right. Well, give me that. 1 Corinthians 7 and 31. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 31. And they that use this world, they that use this world, come on, as not abusing it for the fashion of this world, pass it away. You see that? All the fashions that are upon this earth are women dressing out of order, or uh, uh, different color hair in their hair. God never created a woman to uh, bleach their hair like that. That blonde hair crap. No. Men wearing their pants underneath, uh, underneath their buttocks. That's the fashion that was created by man. Right. Give me Acts chapter 530. Real quick. So you understand, we have a uniform that the creator of heaven and earth gave us. He set that uniform above all nations. Even what you see in the bottom of our garments right here. That's royal that's, right. that's royal fashion. Right. Did you know that? You didn't know that, huh? So now it's time to be retaught. This is what it means to be born again. Right. All right, sis, because we're going over uniformity. All right, because the fashion that we have on right now, women wearing tight pants, uh, blonde hair, red hair, green hair, rainbow hair, brothers wearing pants underneath their buttocks. God said that's not his fashion. Right. He never set that up. He gave us a uniform from the beginning. Right. He called us royalty. Now, let me ask you a question. All right, royalty. Every time you saw a princess, what was she wearing? Huh? A dress. God called you a princess. You are a daughter, a princess of God. So he told the women what to wear. He told the men what to wear, how to dress. He gave it to you. You got what I want? Read that. Read, no, read, read what I gave you first. Acts chapter 5 verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus. Oh, jump up, jump up. Verse 29. Acts chapter 5 verse 29 Then Peter and the other apostle answered and said uh -huh. We ought to obey God rather than men right. See that? Because fashion, who creates fashion? Who creates fashion? Huh? Men! Men create fashion That's where you get the Victoria's Secrets That's where you get the Sean John right. Right. Uh, You get all the Louis Vuitton they, get, they created the fashion But the creator of the uh, who created fashion itself was God and he gave you a special fashion above all nations. Right. And he said, hey, keep my fashion. You royalty, you kings, and you princesses upon this earth. Watch, everybody going to want to mimic you. What's the first thing other people do when we drop a, a, a hot style? What they do? They copy it. Because it's already prophesied in the book. Our fashion is the top fashion on the planet. We are the people of this book. We are the top chosen people of, on the planet. So to follow Christ, follow God and his word and his fashion, and you won't fail. You understand that? Anytime you, you feel like, all right, listen, is this correct? He says rely on this. Go back to here. Am I doing it right? Give me that. Proverbs uh, 3 and 5. Watch this. Proverbs 3 and 5. Because another fashion, right? Just like what, you, what you're doing right now. You probably don't know. But I'm, we're going to show you today. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 5. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. What does that mean? It says trust in the Lord with all thy heart. What that mean? Right. So when it comes to anything that you're not sure about. Before you go to a man-made doctrine, a man-made fashion. It says trust in him. Okay. Because in this Bible, we have dietary laws. How to eat. Right. All right, because if we follow that dietary law, we wouldn't be the first one with high blood pressure, right. diabetes, right. gout, right. heart failure. Right. Long as we rely and stay in the book, because he gave us ways to eat. That's All right, right. Uh, even when it comes to uh, ceremonial laws, he gave us which holidays, high holy days, for us to observe. Do you celebrate Christmas? Do you celebrate Christmas too? Both of y'all celebrate Christmas. Do you know God is against that? That's not his fashion. Bring it out. Bring it out. He's against it. We, it we just brought it out earlier. Bring it out. We bring it out. Jeremiah, first, before you hit Jeremiah, give me uh, 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 Colossians 2 and 8. Watch. He warns you over and over. Stop following the ways of this world. Stop following man. Because they're leading you to death. They're leading you to destruction. The other nations are benefiting off our backs with these nations. They got Black Fridays, right? What's the other wicked one they got? They got Black Fridays where they Cyber Mondays. They benefiting when you in your sin. When you breaking God's commandments, they benefiting off of that. Read. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. Beware lest any man, any what? Any man, any what? Any man spoil you. You see that? Any man spoil you. 
that man is going to lie to you. He's going to trick you to break God's commandments. He's going to trick you to say, listen, I'm not going to wear that dress. I'm going to wear these tight-fitted jeans. I'm not going to pull, pull up my pants. I'm going to sag. That's my swag. No, but God says his swag is the bright way. A woman should be dressed modestly. That means all that, once it belongs to your husband. All right? Once you decide that, hey, this man is worthy to be married, I'm going to make sure I cover up. Because what happens when a woman is dressed out of order? What she, everybody want to talk to her. Everybody looking at her, 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 her front parts, waiting until she walk away. Right? Everybody, every man does that. We men, we understand that. So, sister, you have to understand, God, God, he's protecting his, his daughters. He want to make sure his daughters are dressed appropriately. That's why he gave the woman a uniform. All right, read. Spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. Merry Christmas is a philosophy. God said, don't do that. Beware, be careful of that thing. He never set that up. Now we're going to get Christmas in the Bible where God tells you, don't do that. Don't learn of it. Watch. Jeremiah chapter 10 verse 1. Somebody get a Bible so they can see it for themselves. Show them that we ain't lying. Watch. Hear ye the word which the Lord speak unto you, O house of Israel. O who? O house of Israel. The 12 tribes of Israel. He said these, what I'm about to warn you about. He said this is for you. So you don't get caught up in the fashions of this world. So you don't get caught up in that crap. So you don't end up killing yourself. Spending your money going broke. So you can't feed your family. All right? He said, watch. I'm giving this order to you. Watch. Thus said the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen. Why? It says learn not the way of the heathen, meaning those who are not from the 12 tribes of Israel. He said, don't learn their way. Don't learn their custom. Because what they do in, in school right now, if I go to uh, Head Start, they got what set up in those schools right now to teach your children what? Right now around this time. They got Christmas trees. They got Christmas trees set up. They got candy canes on the trees. Before that, they had they showed them how to do what? Draw turkeys with their hand. But God said no. Watch this. Read on. Learn not the way of the heathen. Learn not the way of the heathen. Read. And be not dismayed at the signs of heaven. For the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. What what is what's a custom mean? What's a custom? It said the custom of the people of vain, huh? Oh, all right. The tradition of those people that's not from the 12 tribes of Israel is vain. Vain means lies. Right. Read. For one, cutting a tree out of a forest. Right. Just like the officer brought out earlier. How does that Christmas tree get to uh, uh, Wind Dixie? How does it get to the front doorsteps of, uh, was it uh, Walmart? How, did, how do they get there? How did, it get, how did it get cut down? What did they use? Chainsaw. Back then they used what before a chainsaw? Axes, right? Watch, read. For one, cut it a tree out of a forest. They did what? Cut it a tree out of the forest. Remember, it said custom of the people are vain. Read. The work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. With the what? With the axe. With the axe. Come on. They deck it with silver and with gold. They did what? They deck it with silver and with gold. What's one of those wicked songs is deck the halls with towels up, right? You know that. That's the, the song they program in our children. Right. They have them raised up in that crap. Well, God in the Holy Bible said, learn not their ways. Right. That's not my way. I ain't never teach you that. He said he even gave us a warning. He said, look, I already know my people that when they go into slavery, they're already going to pick that habit up. So I'm going to put in my book thousands of years to warn them not to do that. So that's why you got to see the oppressors of the other nations are doing the same thing again, those Edomites. That's right. They're doing it. They're making their business to deceive us. Right. That is more right. the purpose on this is to make sure you don't get the tree of life. Right. And make sure that you don't empower your people. That's their main purpose. Once you pluck them out of your spirit, you can build back your nation. You understand that? Once you take hold of God's commandments, you back in rulership, brother. Yeah, right. See, back on top. You understand that? So it all depends on you. Take the water sign. Take heed. Read. For the gospel That's of right. people are vain. The one cut in a tree out of the forest. The work of the hands of the workman with the axe. Yes, they take it with silver and with gold. <laughs> they fasten it with nails and with hammers that they move not. So now.
now you got it already st a stand for it right now. Back then they had to actually nail that tree, nail it. But now we use the, uh, the what's that called, the, the tree stand. But God said the custom of those people is vain, is lying. Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcast, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org